How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another problem. This problem is called binary tree post order traversal. I just want to point out too that this is a hard problem according to leak code. Uh, some people have been asking me to do medium or hard problems, so things that are just generally harder than what I've been doing. And I want to point out that I think this is a good example of why leak codes kind of like difficulty tag isn't necessarily the best indicator as to how hard or how challenging something is. So personally, I think this problem is rather easy compared to a lot of the other problems that I've done. It's really just like your basic post order traversal of a tree, uh, which is very important to know, but I don't think it's, it requires much thinking. It's kind of uh, like your bread and butter of computer science. It's something that you should know. It's kind of like your ABCs. Uh, that's not the, you know, belittle anyone who thinks it's tough. Like it, it's hard to learn and that, that sort of thing, but I do think it's something that's very common and I don't think it really requires much uh, problem solving. It's more, come, it, come, it kind of just comes down to like, do you know how to do a post order traversal of a tree or not? So going forward, I really just want to do things, and I've always wanted to do things that are just the most helpful for you guys. So if you guys have problems that you guys need help with, or you guys have problems you don't understand, or would just generally want me to solve, be sure to let me know, leave a comment below, and I'd be happy to try and do that problem. Generally what I try and do is I try and do problems that I think are interesting, or important to know, or are asked often by uh, large companies. So. With that being said, let's jump into this problem, but going forward, I really don't want to focus necessarily on the difficulty, but more how relevant these problems are to you guys. And I want to give you guys problems that are going to be the most helpful and probably are the most important to actually know. So let's get into it. So literally it just says, given a binary tree, return the post order traversal of its nodes values. So for anyone who doesn't know, a post order traversal is basically just traversing a tree structure. It could even be a graph technically. Uh, but semantics, right? So we have this tree and we need to do a post order traversal. And a post order traversal is basically just grabbing all these nodes values, um, but we have to process them in a specific order. So the order that we have to process them in is you process the entire left subtree of the current node, and then the entire right subtree of the current node, and then you add the node itself. So here it's three, two, one, because we process the entire left subtree of one, which is the root, which actually has no left subtree. Then we process the entire right subtree. So once we come to two, we have to process its left subtree. So once we get to three, it has no children, right? It has no uh, left or right nodes. So we process three, we add it to our list. Our recursion pops back off to the stack uh, to our recursive call from two, so we add two. And then we've processed the entire right subtree of the, the root, so we just add its actual value, which is one. So the code for this isn't too crazy. They actually want us to do it um, iteratively because recursively it's kind of intuitive, they think. So what we need to do is basically just a standard DFS. So I always like to have error checking personally. I think it's a good thing to have. I think all your interviews, you should have some sort of error checking if you don't, um, I think it kind of looks uh, a little naive, like maybe you're not considering all cases, so it's good to have error checking. So the first thing I like to do is just uh, have error checking, but I also like to return or initialize the return value. So I'll just say list, because right, we need to return, I literally almost just pointed at the screen, <laughs> we need to return a list of integers. So list integer, um, and we could just call this, eh, let's just call it values, right? Because these are the values in the tree, equals new array list integer, so if our root is null, meaning we have no tree to process, we could just return our values, which will be an empty array list. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So DFS, we're just gonna use a stack. So we'll make a stack. So we'll say stack, and it's gonna hold tree nodes because we're gonna process the tree nodes. We'll call it stack and set it equal to a new stack. Oops, not integer, tree node. Cool, so now what we need to do is we need to start processing the tree, right? So we need to add to our stack, so stack.push root. So now that we know that our root isn't null, we have a node to process. So we push it onto our stack. And now what we wanna do is traverse the tree while our stack is not empty. So I'll say, wow, if I can spell, our stack is not empty. We have some kind of processing to do, right? So the processing that we need to do is we need to get the current node, right? So we could pop that off the stack. So we'll say tree node current equals stack dot pop. And that will give us the node that we're currently on. So 
what we need to do now is add its value to our result. And I know this can sound a little weird because we just said we need to process this entire left subtree and right subtree, but we could use a little tra trick. So we'll say values.add, and we're gonna add it at the zeroth index. So we're gonna add it at the zeroth index by saying add zero, and then we'll say current.val. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna put the current value at the first index in the array. So anytime we process any of its subsequent nodes, it's gonna basically shift the root value all the way to the back of the array. So that will save us um, a little bit of a headache. So we'll just insert it at the zeroth position every time. So now that we've added the value, we're done with that work for that node. So now all we need to do is check its left child and right subchild, sorry, left child and right child and see if they're actually existing. And if they are, we just wanna put them into our stack. So we'll check if current.left is not equal to null, we just wanna say stack.push current.left. So easy enough. So if there is a left child to process, process the left child. And same thing for the right child. So if current.right is not equal to null, whoops. We'll say stack.push current dot right. Cool. So basically what we're doing again is we're traversing this tree and trying to push its left child, doesn't have one, go to the, the right child, right? Process its left child, doesn't have children. And so we kind of just constantly are adding to the stack. So once the stack is empty, right, because we're pulling from the stack here, stack.pop we will have actually added to our values every single uh, node's value in the tree. And because we're inserting it at the zeroth position, it's gonna shift the entire array over. So by the time we're done processing this, we've actually, the last thing we'll, we will have added is the root value. And now we can just return our result. Except we named it value, so return values. Awesome, and that's accepted. So if this is helpful guys, be sure to leave me a like and subscribe. This is how to solve binary tree post-order traversal in Java. Again, if you guys have questions you guys need help with or would like to see me solve, please leave them in the comments and I'd be happy to help out. Hope this is helpful and I'll see you guys next time. They never told me it was easy to glow. That's a firm feeling breezy when I'm hitting the road. Yeah. Rolled up and I made it get down. That shiny, no, I'm really